The great white throne judgment is one of seven judgments in the Bible, which are the judgment at Calvary, the judgment of seat of Christ, the daily self-judgment of the believer, the judgment on Israel in the tribulation, the judgment of the Gentile nations, the judgment of the fallen angels, and what we are talking about today, the great white throne judgment. The group of people who won't be judged at this judgment is the body of Christ. All safe people from the church age are judged at the judgment seat of Christ. And you can read about that in Romans 14.10 and also 2 Corinthians 5.10. So no born-again believer from the church age is judged at the great white throne judgment. The body of Christ will be helping the Lord do some judging. Look at 1 Corinthians 6. Verse 1, it says, There any of you having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust, and not before the saints? Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels, how much more things that pertain to this life? So remember that no safe person from the church age is judged at this judgment. The common belief is that no safe person or righteous man at all will be judged there. But that isn't true because Revelation chapter 20.15 says, says and definitely implies someone's name is written in the book of life at this judgment. The groups who are judged at the great white throne judgment are lost people from every age along with Old Testament saints, the lost people from the church age, tribulation saints, millennial saints, and the fallen angels. Revelation 20.11 through 15 describes the great white throne judgment. It says in verse 11, And I saw a great white throne judgment, and I, and I saw a great white throne in him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. The reason there was found no place for them is because this judgment is taking place after the millennial reign when the heavens and earth have been destroyed. And you can read about that in Second Peter 3.10. It says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat? With the heavens and earth destroyed, these people have no place to stand. That's why Psalms 1.5 says, Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. Now go back to Revelation 20 and verse 12 says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. Notice it says according to their works, letting you know that works are involved. Go to John 5.26, it says, For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice, and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Notice again it says they that have done good and they that have done evil, showing you again that works are involved in this judgment. The common belief among most people is that Old Testament saints were saved by looking forward to the cross like we are saved by looking back at the cross. It definitely is true that we in the church age are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ without works of any kind. Because in Ephesians 2, 8, 9 it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and not, not of yourself. It is the gift of God, and not of works, lest any man should boast. And Romans 4, 5 says, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. But if you have done any study in dispensational truth at all, you have found out that God deals with different people in different times, in different ways. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2, 15, to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You have to rightly divide the Bible or you will get led into false doctrine. People in the Old Testament weren't saved by looking forward to the cross. The disciples who walked and talked with Jesus Christ didn't even understand the gospel. It says in Luke 18, 31, Then he took unto him the twelve and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. For he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles, and shall be mocked, 
and spitefully entreated and spitted on, and they shall scourge him and put him to death, and the third day he shall rise again. And they understood none of these things. And this saying was hid from them, neither knew they the things which were spoken. So how could they have been saved the same way as we are when they didn't, didn't even understand the gospel Jesus was speaking of? Everyone in the Old Testament was saved by grace, because without grace no one could be saved, but how God dispensed the grace to them was different. There was an element of works involved. And you can see this when you look at the Old Testament. It says in Leviticus 18 and 5, it says, You shall, you shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. Ezekiel 3.20 says, Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die, because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thine hand. And in Deuteronomy chapter 6.24 it says, And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God, for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day, and it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. In the Old Testament, they had to do something to get righteousness. And notice it says, our righteousness. That is the difference between a church age saint and an Old Testament saint. The righteousness you have, if you are saved, is not of your own. You got it from Jesus Christ. Romans 10.3 says, For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. So there is an element of works involved for Old Testament saints and also for tribulation saints. In the book of James 1.1, 1, 1, or in the, in the book of James in chapter 1 verse 1, you see that the book is written to the twelve tribes of, which were scattered abroad. It is written doctrinally to Jews in the tribulation. So there is an element of works involved for Old Testament saints and also for tribulation saints. In the book of James chapter 1 and verse 1, you see that the book is written to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. It is written doctrinally to Jews in the tribulation. In James 2.24 it says, Ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. If you take that verse just like it says it without adding to the verse or taking from the verse, it says someone is justified by works. It can't be born again Christians in the church age because, because Paul says we, are ju we aren't justified by works. Galatians 2.16 says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. And, he, and again in Romans 5, 9, he says, Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Notice it says we are saved from wrath through him, which is Jesus. We have already been judged. We are justified by Jesus' blood and have been saved. We have already been tried in Jesus Christ and found not guilty in Christ. So Christians will not be judged at the great white throne judgment. At the judgment seat of Christ, we are judged for our service. At the white throne judgment, we, we will be there as judge and jury. See what happens if you don't obey the command in 2 Timothy 2.15 to rightly divide the word of truth. If you don't rightly divide the word of truth, it will make those verses contradict each other. Everything in the Bible is for us, but not everything in the Bible is to us. James 2.24 is two tribulation saints and can't apply to church age saints doctrinally because we are justified by the faith in Christ as Paul says in Galatians 2.16. In the tribulation they are under the everlasting gospel, not the gospel Paul preached in 1 Corinthians 15. Revelation 12.17 says, And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Again in Revelation 14.12 it says, Here is the patience of the saints, here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. In the tribulation the law is coming back and the Sabbath is coming back. Colossians 2.16 says, Let no, no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow 
of things to come. But the body is of Christ. In Matthew 24, Jesus is describing the time of Jacob's trouble. And the body of Christ isn't even in the context. And he says this in Matthew 24, 20. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. So from these verses you can see that the Sabbath day is coming back in the tribulation. And temple worship even comes back in the tribulation. Revelation 11, 1 says, And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God in the altar, and them that worship therein. And during the 1,000 year reign of Christ, it isn't by faith anymore, because they can see Jesus Christ. Hebrews 11, 1 says, Now faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If they can see Jesus Christ reigning on a, on a visible throne, with millions of born-again believers walking around with glorified bodies, then how would faith come into play in the millennial time period? It says in Revelation twenty-two fourteen, it says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Why would a born-again believer in the body of Christ need to get eternal life off of a tree? We don't need to eat off of a tree to have eternal life. We've got eternal life through Jesus Christ. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So just from the few verses I have given you, you can already see that the Old Testament saints, tribulation saints, and millennial saints aren't saved the same way as we are in the church age. We have to recognize there are differences and rightly divide the Bible. This is why they are judged at the great white throne judgment. They are judged according to their works, and their name has to be in the book of life. Every born-again believer in the church age already has their name in the book of life. And you can read about that in Philippians 4.3. And our name can't be blotted out like someone in the tribulations can. Look at Revelation 3.5. It says, He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. But back to Revelation 20, and look at verse 13, it says, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. Notice it says death and hell. We need to look to the Bible to figure out what death is. After Jesus died on the cross, he spent three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. He wasn't burning in hell like Stephen Anderson says. He was preaching to spirits in prison and preaching the gospel to those that were dead. Matthew twelve forty says, For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall, shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. He preached to spirits in prison. And you can read about that in 1 Peter three nineteen. And Peter says in 1 Peter 4, 6, for for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. In the Old Testament, when a wicked man died, he goes to the same hell that men go to now. When a righteous man died, he went to Abraham's bosom, where Lazarus went in Luke 16. The reason they didn't go to the third heaven where God is, is because Jesus hadn't shed his blood yet. And Hebrews 10.4 says, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. And in Exodus 34 and verse 7, it says, Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty. In the Old Testament, they got forgiveness for their sins, but their sins weren't cleared until Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood. And another way you know Old Testament saints are saved the same way as New Testament saints is because they didn't even go to the same place. If you read in Luke 16, you will see that the rich man in hell and Lazarus in Abraham's bosom were separated by a great gulf. When Jesus rose from the dead, he emptied Abraham's bosom. And in Revelation 1.18, it says, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and have the keys of hell and of death. So look at Revelation twenty thirteen again. It says, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. We have figured out that death is what used to be called Abraham's bosom. Abraham's bosom is empty in the church age, 
But when a tribulation saint dies or is martyred like they are in Revelation 6-9, they will go to the heart of the earth where the Old Testament saints used to be. At least until the rapture of tribulation saints that is spoken of in Matthew 24-31. If a tribulation saint dies in the tribulation, he will go to the heart of the earth. He will be resurrected at the end of the tribulation. A good type of this is at the end of Job 42 where Job's children are resurrected. The tribulation saint then goes into the millennium where he will die again and go back to the heart of the earth again. A good type of this is Moses dies twice. He died in the Old Testament and will die again in the tribulation. The Lazarus who Jesus resurrected died twice and there are other types as well. The reason a tribulation saint, a millennial saint, will die is because they don't get glorified bodies like safe people from the church age did at the pre-tribulation rapture. The reason they don't die after the great white throne judgment and on into eternity is because they eat off the tree of life, which I told you about before in Revelation 22.14 that says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Born again Christians in the church age don't get eternal life off of a tree. We got it through Jesus Christ. And back to Revelation 20. Look at verse 14. It says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Every unsaved person's future is the lake of fire. And this should give us a burden for lost people and for our friends and family. Uh, we should win as many souls to Jesus Christ as we can. And this, the verse that I just read is no doubt one of the scariest verses in the Bible. The last thing you should want for your future is to stand in front of a holy God who will judge you and bring you into remembrance of every idle word you ever said. The Bible says we are all sinners and deserve hell fire. If you will come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your cru crucified, buried, and risen Savior, you can be saved and have eternal life and not have to be judged at the great white throne judgment.